Hey everyone, this is Video Boy, and welcome to Archipelago Devlog number 37. So, um, I like to start doing this now. I'll tell you guys, uh, leave a like at the beginning of the video, so it makes it easier to get more likes. So, uh, let's set a goal. Let's try to get 12 likes for this video. I think we can easily make it. We've done it before. So, um, how have you guys been? Uh, in today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what I've done in the game and uh, like in the past few weeks and also uh, I have a question for you guys at the end about a potential feature that will be added in the game in the future if you guys like the idea. So first things first I'd like to show you some stuff I've added so for the last update before I had to focus on school I was implementing an entity type system so this would create a more universal and overall just better way to add entities so here's an example of the entity type JSON file this one is for the player. So these files contain different data about this specific entity type. So we have an ID, we have a hittable option. So that determines whether you can hit, uh, if the hit animation will play or not when that entity is hit. And uh, there's many more. And you can also see there's the view and call rect settings. So that's for uh, view and uh, uh, collision. So those determine the visibility rectangle of the entity. So that's like that's a rectangle that goes around the actual image of the, the entity so you can uh, calculate if it's within view of the screen to avoid having to draw it for no reason. Um, and the color rect is for the collision rectangle of the entity. So they're, they're both different. Uh, they show you an image on the screen. Uh, the player, uh, for example, he's, he's like uh, the visibility rect is much bigger than the collision rect because the collision rectangle is just his feet because that's where he's going to hit when he walks. You don't want to like make it so that when he walks into a wall facing upwards, the collision's at his head. That wouldn't really make much sense and it doesn't look natural. So that's why we did it that way. And finally, there are the animations. So the player has three so far and more will be added, of course, later on. So each animation has its own property, such as the ID, uh, the time between the frames, how many frames, and many more. I even made it possible to reuse the same image for a different animation. Like we can see here, the sprinting animation is just the default image, which is for walking. Uh, but it just makes it play faster, so it looks like it's sprinting rather than just walking. Okay, so there's one last thing I want to show you guys with entity types. So if we open up the teleporters JS1 file, you can find this property that says uh, number of styles. So this property tells the game how many visual variations there are of this entity. So right now the teleporter has two. And if you look in the assets folder, you can find two sprite sheets for the teleporter for the same animation, which is the default one. It's just the, the teleporter animation. Uh, but they each have a number after it. So that number is the entity style number. So in this case, if the entity has a style of 0, it will be blue, and if its style is 1, then it will become red. So we can actually test this by modifying the load data of the entity in the map.js01. So if we go on the server, we can find the entity loader. Uh, and then if we modify the style, style attribute, which is 1 right now, we'll set it to 0. It will now become blue in the game. The purpose of doing this is so that we can have many visual variations of entities that are functionally the same but look different. For example, we can have many different types of skeletons, but in the end they all have the same AI. So this makes it easier to do that, to have uh, many different skeleton looks, but they all work the same. Okay, so that is all I have to say about the new entity type system. Now I'll show you the game working in HTML5. So if we load it up, it runs. It isn't super smooth and the FPS is very low compared to the actual desktop game. But I'll work on fixing that kind of stuff later, and there's still also a few collision bugs with the entity type system. So yeah, the game is pretty buggy, and I plan to fix all that next week. So that'll be my goal for next week, is to fix as many bugs as I can, uh, clean up the code, make it look all nice. And I also want to work on the map editor, make that code look nice as well, uh, so I can put it on GitHub. And then eventually I'll start adding features to it, and I'll get back into the normal schedule, I'll just update the dates for when I want uh, want to be done specific things. Alright, so I told you guys I want to ask you something about the game. It isn't too big, but I want to know what you think. 
So if you've been following me on GitHub, you may have noticed that I posted a repository for a test project I was working on, just because I thought it would be cool to try it out. So basically it's a test on how to make uh, hexagonal maps, kind of like uh, Civilization, or many other games do that also. And I think it looked pretty cool. So this is just a test, as you can see, and it's pretty pixel perfect if you click uh, on the different hexagons. It's actually pretty neat how I, uh, how I did it. I can do a tutorial if you guys want eventually on that. Uh, but I want to know from you guys is, would you like to see this idea being implemented in Archipelago somehow? So I don't know, maybe you guys have good ideas. I was thinking maybe like the boats can use some sort of hexagonal grid to travel on. Uh, I'm really not too sure. We're gonna have to decide how we're gonna do boat combat and everything. Uh, but if you have any ideas, please leave them below and we'd love to hear them. All right, that pretty much wraps up this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new, please subscribe. It helps a lot and it encourages us to make new content. And uh, also, if you haven't liked the video already, please leave a like. We'll try to get to 12 for this video. And that's pretty much all. So I'll see you guys. Uh, we'll probably do the next devlog next Wednesday or maybe Thursday. And we'll also try to get a tutorial out this weekend on Saturday. But yep, see you guys next time.